Hello, Fennel. Welcome to Attack of the Podcast. Strong, strong opening. I am Griffin Claude Beresford Dauphin Newman. I'm David Lawrence Sims. And I'm Producer Ben. A.K.A. Producer Ben, a.k.a. Ben the Ben. Producer Ben. Producer <laughs> I'm fucking... I was telling the guys, the boys, before we recorded, uh, my parents have to move out of my childhood home tomorrow at noon. And so I, for the last three nights, have been sleeping on the floor of my vacated childhood bedroom surrounded by garbage bags with just a pillow. Yeah, and you here, could get an inflatable mattress, you know. Buy one just for this fucking... I don't know. Three days it's stand. good to have. I'm made of money. Uh, I my point. I I haven't gotten a good night's sleep in a while. Sure, I don't sleep very well, so I'm I'm pretty tired. But his um, name is Ben Hosley, aka Perduer Ben, aka the Ben Deucer, aka the Poet Laureate, aka Mister Positive, aka the Haas. The Haas. Thank you. Yeah. Aka Hello Fennel. And there is another one you added, but I've already forgotten it in yeah, last week's too. episode. We can keep track of this stuff. Um, keep fun, track fact, of fun fact. Fun fact. My roommate just moved out. Uh, learned. Not Molly. I stayed in his bed once. Yeah. In a room with a lot of books and reptiles. That's correct. Yeah. He just moved out, left his bed. I took it. So now I have a better bed. Where did my bed. Where did Learned move to? Santa Fe. What? Why? He's going to grad school. Where? Uh, St. John's University, I believe. The Great Books. The Great Books Curriculum at St. John's. It's called Great Books? They do this thing called the Great Books Curriculum. I don't know. Okay. He uh, packed his shit in a U-Haul and drove to Santa Fe from Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. I'm tired of moving. I think moving's stupid. No well, one should move. Well, he really moved. Yeah. It no, was a real a move. move. That's a big um, move. But yeah, I forgot you stayed in his bed once. Yeah, and he had a he yeah. had a, he had a 12-foot bone constrictor. Yeah. Maybe it was six foot. I forget. It was, a, want, it was a big snake. You want to know the dumbest thing about this move my parents are making? Go and, ahead. And how much stress and anxiety it's cost me and how little sleep I'm getting and all this stuff? Yeah, sure. sure. Literally moving five blocks away. <laughs> right. They're moving within a neighborhood, basically. Yeah. And my dad, like, we went and got dinner the other night, like, in the quote unquote new neighborhood. Right. And he's like, what do you think of the new neighborhood? Pretty hip, huh? <laughs> five blocks. <laughs> but it's not a new neighborhood, is it? No, they're moving. They're, they're literally moving like within the village. They're moving like four avenues over. Yeah. All right. Well, new neighborhood. Hey, man, if you live one place for, I don't know, how long have they lived in that place? Uh, my dad's lived there for uh, probably about thirty-five years. You know, yeah. anything's a change. Yeah, I agree. But that speaks more to the fact that my father never went beyond a five-block radius. <laughs> he's a parochial man. Yeah, is what he you're works saying. Two blocks away from where he's lived for the sure. last thirty-five years. Sure. Um, and it sounds he, like a good life. He like has like only two places where he eats. Really? Yeah. So I could go find your dad if I went to wherever. Well, he used to always go to Grace Papaya on Ugh, 8th I know, and on 8th and 6th. That's, yeah, and, and it's gone now. Got demolished by a liquiteria. Wait, your dad has been eating Grace Papaya hot dogs, like, as a meal <laughs> for, like, decades? Yeah. yeah. Those things are not exactly, like, if I eat, like, three of those, it's an emergency. Did I mention my father's dad? <laughs> <laughs> that he died 25 years ago. So when ago. you say he's moving a few avenues over, you mean a few avenues into heaven. He's a ghost dad. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about ghost dad. He's a ghost dad directed by Sidney Poitier. Um, uh, no, yeah, no, my, father, my father, he, he would only eat grapes of pie. He'd get the recession special, which was the what, two, yeah, two dogs and two a Two dogs drink. and a soda or whatever. Right. Or and a papaya. He would, uh, by the way, this is a podcast about uh, Star Wars Episode Two: Attack the Clones, <laughs> the sequel to The Phantom Menace. <laughs> Uh, he would get the for recession. For first-time listeners, in case you're just listeners. tuning in. Yeah, yeah. this is... Uh... This isn't Talking Dad. This is <laughs> Attack go of the on. Podcast. Please go ahead. Griffin David present Attack of the Podcast, where we talk about the second and final Star Wars film. Now, my dad... Let me just know. Well, let me finish up my dad, and then we'll all have time to talk about dads. No, we got, I, we got I, an hour I have another thing I want to talk about. We all got go time ahead. to talk about our dads. Uh, he would order the recession special. And then uh, the Atkins craze hit, and my father was like, I, I do have a bit of a belly. I should probably lose some weight. Okay. So then he did what he called the modified Atkins. All right. Which was he got the recession special, but without buns. So he would just eat a craze with a wiener. <laughs> he would just eat two <laughs> that wieners. Is, that's gross. Yeah. And yeah. also, how do you even, like, how are you hand it? It's a hot tube of meat. Yeah, they would just throw it at him. <laughs> they throw it into his mouth. I love Grace Papaya. It's uh, the best, it yeah. still exists on 72nd and Broadway. That's the only other... True, pure Grace yes. Papaya. It's important to note. There's papaya I'm, dog. I'm fine with the other papayas. They're just not They're as fine. good. It's not the same thing. You know, but if I want a cheap ass meal, yeah, at like eleven at night or whatever in Manhattan, then yes. yeah, you know. But there's like the papaya dog on like, what is it like Sixth Avenue and like it's right next to the IFC. That's correct. Like yeah. near Waverly. Yeah, and uh, that one uh, is fine. 
but they also sell fucking like Philly cheesesteaks and chicken fingers and all these yeah, things. Yeah, it's, it's like, horse shit. You should just have hot dogs. Well, that's the thing. Grace of Pie just fucking knew. It's like six fruit drinks. Yeah. Well, the weird hot dog. The that's weird it. thing about Grace of Pie is they're like, we're going to be a hot dog place. And what do people like with hot dogs? Papaya juice. <laughs> And exotic fruit drinks. It really does feel like it's like someone's like, I'm going to open a bagel store. And like, what do people like with bagels? Papaya juice. Like, it, <laughs> it doesn't match with anything. I but they that, just decided, you know what? They're going to have the fucking papaya juice. I think the point you're making here is papaya juice doesn't go all of anything. It doesn't really go. <laughs> you don't weird. <laughs> It's a weird juice. Uh, so my my piece of news is I don't know if anyone's heard of Noel Edmonds. I'm from I grew up in Britain. This no. better tie into your dad. No, 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 definitely. Oh, well, you know, well, kind of. Anyway, um, Noel Edmonds is the host of the British Deal or No Deal. Okay, uh, my favorite game show of all time. The American version is your favorite, or the British? Yeah, I just love Howie. <laughs> you just love Howie. See, the British Deal or No Deal is very different. How so? Well, it's the same concept of you're opening boxes. Oh, pounds. Yeah. That's true. Money is in pounds. Sure. But true uh, rather than girls holding the suitcases, which is, I believe, how it works in, yep. in the American mm-hmm. version, the contestants all have a box. There's 20 contestants, or however many boxes they are. They all live in a hotel together. What? It's a It's a daily show, it, Monday to Fridays, and every day a new one of them is chosen to be like... The you know the 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 picker I don't and know you don't know if your box and your bo- and then you bring your box with you right. and you don't know what's in it and then a new person is added and they get a new box you know it, it, and it's sort of so they all know each other yeah and they've been living together for weeks sometimes even months and they're really like there's a lot of like oh, Jimmy I'm really rooting for you I'm really hoping that this is you know that there's a low number in this spot you know like this is crazy it's really good and Noel Edmonds is the uh, the host and he. I think like how he does a lot of like, I just talk to the banker and oh, I hate him. I hate him. It. I love you and he I hate plays him. plays it up. Yeah, he really plays it up. Anyway, so I was addicted to deal and no deal when I was in college. Uh, he gave a bizarre new interview claiming that Wi-Fi is destroying our electromagnetic fields and death does not exist. Yeah, two good points. Uh, he explains the key to happiness is to reimagine your physical body as a container of energy that will return to a massive universal web when you die. Yeah, how else would anyone think of their body? That's the that's what a body is. Um, and so he says, you don't live life, life lives you. There is no such thing as death. It's just departure. You cannot die. It's been known for a very long time. Is My, Cameron Crowe writing Noel Edmund <laughs> now? What is this? My energy will return to where it came from, part of a massive, incomprehensible, universal web of energy. You don't live life, life um, lives you. That's no, a fucking Noel Elizabeth Edmonds, here he is. Noel Oh, Ed- he looks great. Yeah, Noel Edmonds, he used to host a show in the 90s called Noel's House Party, uh, a British chat show that uh-huh. was very strange. Uh, and then he kind of tailed, you know, hit tailspin, kind of vanished from media, and then came back with Deal or No Deal, and he said the reason that he had come back is because he had written down every day that he wanted to be, like, a success again. He would just write it down, like, a hundred times. I should do that. He said that, that sounds... was the secret. Too. It was sort of a you know a, yeah. the secret type. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Anyway, Noel Edmonds. Uh, ben, what's up with your dad? <coughs> oh God, he's doing good. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, he's retired now. Where does he live? Where Where do you hail from, Ben? Uh, from New Jersey. Whoop, New- whoop. NJ. What? What? Uh, the Neej. But he, uh, <laughs> the Neej. State bird, the mosquito. But my father was a painter. Oh, cool. and, wow. um, Ooh, Like cool. a house painter or a fine artist? No, fine artist. Hey and he now. lived in the East Village, mm-hmm. and he had an opportunity to buy this amazing apartment for no money sure. when it was a shithole in right. the like, late 60s, and he mm-hmm. didn't. And that was my bread and butter. Yeah, and that's, 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 that's the legacy chance. you did not get. Yep. You could be, you could be living in the East Village right now. I know. Rent free. I know. It'd probably be really annoying, though. Yeah. There's a lot of electro smog there, probably. Electro smog? That's what Noel Edmonds is worrying against. There's too much electro smog. Okay. Uh, Star well, Wars Episode 2, Attack the Clock. Should we're, we get to it? I mean, we're sick of this movie. It's like, yeah. let's, let's, let's just, let's just yeah. nine minutes Let's hold hands, episode, Griffin. So. Let's hold hands. We're holding hands. We're holding, holding hands. They're holding oh, Okay. And I'm in uh, there. I'm sick of this movie. I'm I don't ever want to talk about it again. We yeah. have about three more episodes to do. We have three more episodes left. Yeah. Okay. This is one of them, right? I think we have four, including this one. Eight, nine, ten. What is this? Seven or eight? What is this? We're recording. This is number seven. Oh, jeez, Louise. Yeah, yeah, boy, oh boy. Yeah. Talk it's okay. Me. We got it planned out. We just talked about We're it. We're gonna do it. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be totally fine. Um, How many minutes we've been recording, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes. Jesus great, Christ. Great, 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 great. So we're here to talk about Star Wars. We were Forty-five minutes. Episode two, really Attack of the Clones. You thought we'd done it. You thought stuff. we'd done it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're here. Yes, that's why we're here. Talk about 
episode two. Because well, of her dads. A Tark of the Clarns. Without we them. are here because, yeah, that's true. A good point. Tie it all together. We <laughs> yeah. couldn't be here without the daddy O's upstairs. Yep. Yes. Uh, they are, our three dads live together in an apartment above UCB Comedy's <laughs> recording studio. The daddy O's upstairs. They live on the 10th floor. We're yeah. on the 9th floor. Yeah, we've been pitching that sitcom to NBC for 18 they years. They keep saying, to stop it. Yeah. We have never Cut heard of these three men. Yeah. <laughs> you got Sims, Hosley, Newman, all together, one apartment. Who, what? Why is a seven-year-old pitching me this? I was just yeah. thinking, you know how BoJack Horse, have you watched BoJack Horse? I have not. Oh, there's this great bit in Jack where one of the characters starts dating what is very clearly three little boys stacked on top of each other's shoulders with wearing a trench coat. Yeah. And one of their arms is like a broom because they obviously can't fill out the trench. <laughs> and it's just very funny. I was just thinking about that. What uh, if that had been us? I, I, going around Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We would have sold it. Yeah, we would have. We, we were true. missing only a trench coat. Yeah. Uh, I stand by this statement I'm about to make. Oh, boy. Kids tacked on top of each other in a trench coat is one of the things that will always be funny. I agree. Exception. Always funny. I have never seen it not be funny. I have never heard someone reference it and not laughed out loud. It's <laughs> always it's very easy the to laugh fucking best yeah. in every way. The idea of it is funny. The visual itself is funny. They move funny. The voices are funny. Voice like, everything funny. about it the is funny. The thing they want to accomplish is funny. It's funny that they want to accomplish it's it. It's funny that they want and to that accomplish it. this is it. how they've decided to do that. And it's funny that they would still think it could work. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Even though that's a commonly known trope at this and point. And the trope is that it's not convincing. And it's usually to buy alcohol or get into a movie. It's to do a very innocuous thing. The movie one's the funniest. The movie one is me. obviously the funniest. Is the kids because what to- movie could possibly justify... Beverly Hills Cop 2. Uh, so true. Yeah. Oh, my God. Stack it up on top of a trench coat. <laughs> the fact that it's a trench coat is so funny, too. Right. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay. Attack of the Clones. Today, we're talking Attack about of the Clones. politics. Yeah. <laughs> Don't turn off your podcast. <laughs> it's too late. This isn't going to be C-SPAN. We got a fun, irreverent twist. We should talk about the fact that uh, the Senate does kind of look like C-SPAN, though. It does. It totally does. <laughs> We're two, Flying C-SPAN. This is, we, we've watched two of these fucking Phantom Menace movies now. Mm-hmm. We've talked a lot about it on the sidelines. I don't understand how the fucking political system works in these movies. No. And I want to I fucking dig into it because I can't We're figure not out what the structure answers, of it is. But I can try. We've got to ask questions, though. Um, yeah. These two films. That's the only way you get answers is by asking questions. Yeah. Not, you're not guaranteed. No, but it's the only way. Yeah. Because I'll say, anytime anyone's given me an answer to a question I didn't ask, I'm actually angry. Like, even if it is helpful, I'm like, fuck you, you know? Absolutely. Uh, two of these movies, the Galactic Republic, the Senate, whoever the Chancellor is, all the Senators, these things senators. factor heavily into the plot. Of course, it's the motivation for everything. Right, and if anything, quietly on the sidelines... This fucking like Palpatine rise to power plotline is maybe the most interesting in the movie. Yeah, and it's it's sort of obviously modeled on a sort of Hitler rise to power thing. Right. You know, he's like engineering. Oh Jesus! Turn your fucking phone off, Griffin. He's engineering like uh, out. You know, um, crises, external crises, to vault his way up into power, and eventually yes. suspend power. And yes. Sort of, yeah. But Georgie e. Porgy's combining a lot of different things here. Because yeah. it's like, okay, and he's he, doing a lot of allegorical stuff. He's very much a Hitler figure, but then George it, George Lucas. <laughs> George Lucas is very much a Hitler figure, and then he based one of the characters on himself, and it's <laughs> Chancellor Palpatine. But then he wasn't able to direct him very well. Yeah, well, because it's just too close to home, right? You know? yeah, yeah, no, of course, that's the problem. It became yeah. a very personal project for him. Yeah, he just it was like looking in a mirror. Um, Palpatine, obviously, yes, a dictator figure. Yeah, but but then the Galactic Senate scenes very much feel like based on the American Senate. Sure, the current gridlock. Right, the clowns in Washington. I like to call them. Right, and this, I don't call it so much of a Congress as a circus. The fat cats up on Capitol Hill, and and those two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. The fat but this, cats and the fat dogs. This idea, it's all this petty arguing. There are some fat dogs. We, Why does it right. have to be cats? I just never understood that. Yeah, you know what that is? Is it because cats are, when they're fat, like, are seen as kind of lazy, and dogs, when they're fat, are just kind of cute? <laughs> is that, is, that, is that... Yeah, I think fat dogs still fucking get around. Yeah, because, like, a fat dog, it's like, well, you're a dog. You're dumb anyway. I love dogs. Like, dogs are the best. Me too. Cats, when they're fat, you're like, of shit. You, you're not suck. supposed to be fat. You're like a live animal. Yeah. Like, you're supposed to be able to jump around. You're supposed to be, like, live. And, yeah, you've yeah. been ruined. Uh, I think I actually have the answer. 
I think Garfield fucked it up for all cats. Ah, Garfield. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he was. He fat. allowed cats to be fat. You're saying? Well, he he was fat, and he was such a piece of shit. Oh, that's the suddenly worst. the shorthand for like, okay, what's the worst kind of thing? Oh, someone you think can it be? comes from Gar- Garfield? It's like, oh, a fat cat, just from America's hatred of Garfield. The yeah, character. you just fucking get fat and you sit around and complain. You fuck with a dog. I'm I'm looking up the Galactic Republic on the wiki. Right okay, now. please do. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that gridlock that like we can't get anything done. It's all this petty fighting. Mm-hmm. But then simultaneously with, and Anakin fucking talks about this, a like dictator figure, a man rising to power with uh, trying to uh, accrue the uh, political weight to make his wills reality with no interference. Right. He's looking to, I mean... A triumph of the will, you could say, is what he's aiming for. (laughs) Yes, exactly. I mean, it's as if, like, there's plenty of sci-fi movies, fantasy movies, where there's, like, an evil emperor Mm -hmm. or, you know, a lord of, you know, and he's just, he's just in charge of the whole world or the whole galaxy. And this movie's actually, exactly actually trying to explain how that could come about yeah which i don't think anyone gives a shit about nope no no but that's that's your point most movies where there's a bad guy who rules over everything like lord it's whatever just, it's just that's that's the situation he's the bad guy and he did bad shit and Boom. evil wins right and good people want to take him down goodies versus baddies right yeah but this is like how many different times would a guy have to get reelected? <laughs> right Right. And, and and climb the yeah, ranks how, of different how could he pull political that off? positions to get to a point where no one can tell him now. And one reason it doesn't make a ton of sense. So the arc in these two movies is in the first movie, Palpatine is a lowly senator from Naboo, which is like a small system, small mm-hmm. peaceful planet. And because of the Naboo crisis and his like deft handling of it and the other chancellor, Chancellor Valorum's uh, poor handling of it, mm-hmm. he gets to be chancellor. It's like he, a right place, right time. Thing. He climbs the ladder at the right place at the right time. And obviously, as we know, Palpatine is secretly orchestrating the whole Naboo thing, obviously, to that end. As Darth Sidious. Yes. He is the titular Phantom Menace. He's playing one side against the other. Yeah. And he's leading both sides, basically. Yep. In movie two, mm-hmm. he's still doing it. Yep. He has Dooku now pulling the strings for the Separatists. Right. And the Separatist crisis lets him... Basically, get an army for himself as Supreme Chancellor. Not to mention, he knows that Padme, as a woman of deep integrity, will try to shut down any of his plans. Yeah. So he's like, let's fucking try to kill Padme. Right. Here's a quick sidebar question. Do you think his goal was to kill Padme or to scare her so that she goes off the grid like that? Not sure. It's a good question, because obviously he's orchestrating the assassination through eight back channels. And it fucks up, but then it, he, in the next scene, pushes really hard, like, you should just go on the lam. And it almost seems like that's what he was playing the whole time. He probably knows Padme long enough to know, like... It's going to be hard to kill her. Whoever you think is Padme is not Padme. Oh, that's true. If you punch Padme, Padme then takes, like... She's holding off a newspaper in a background and right. wearing a phony mustache, stacked up on top of three wish, other kids I in wish, a trench coat. I wish that was happening. That'd yeah. be great. At Dexter's Diner. Yeah. Dex's diner. Uh, but, but yeah, he gets her out of the picture so that he knows he can fucking get dumb as a bag of rocks Jar Jar Binks to represent her vote. Who he manipulates, doesn't he? He's like, doesn't is it is it that he says like out loud near Jar Jar Binks like, oh, I wish someone would. Yeah, I mean, manipulate. I mean, it's like, I think Jar Jar has no morals, no backbone. Yeah. You could convince Jar Jar of anything. But here's the thing. Both- you could stand next to Jar Jar and be like, oh, man, I wish Jar Jar would kill himself. And Jar Jar would kill himself. Yeah. Both movies hinge on this moment where Palpatine gets someone to do something for him. Mm-hmm. So in the first movie, Padme voted no confidence mm-hmm. in Chancellor Valorum. And for some reason, even though there are a million senators in yeah. this like tube hall yeah. that they live in filled with like little flying platforms, yeah. no one has the guts to do it, but Padme does it. And then yeah. in the second movie, same thing. I wish someone would, you know, vote for an army of the Republic and Jar but, Jar Banks. Okay, so in this system, do you just need one vote to get something passed? You need one vote to propose it, I guess. That's what I'm asking. Right. It seems silly that it's not come up before. And, like, the Jar Jar Binks thing, is it, like, because he's, Jar Jar's not proposing it, is it, like, oh, they were deadlocked tied, they need one additional vote mm-hmm. out of 50 million votes. Mm-hmm. It's a dead tie right <laughs> now, re- 25 right. million, yay, so, 25 so million, Here's some backstory nay. on the Galactic Senate. Yeah, please. The Galactic Constitution invested it with the power to regulate trade, maintain maps of hyperspace routes. Yeah. And uh, had a Supreme Chancellor. 
Originally, so this is all just about fucking trade. Originally, and roots. If, trade you, roots. if you just have originally, yeah. if you have a planet, you just get to be in it. Okay. Uh, and then I think it seems like it changes. I don't know. This is like so. Long. See, this is what's. This is. I'm already. Uh, I'm starting so to have like a panic boring. attack about this. Can you click on Galactic Constitution because I think this is just a, a fucking rabbit hole we're going to keep on going down. It is it is it is linked to. This is what I don't understand. So originally it used to be any planet gets represented. That makes sense. The the constitution was written in 25,000 BBY. Oh, so we're talking about 25,000 years before this movie. Born before Yoda, yeah. By a member of House Organa, which is Jimmy Smith's house. So that's yeah. how long Jimmy Smith's family's been around. 25,000 years. Okay. Uh, it's the same constitution, although it has been modified. Um, and it creates a Senate and a Supreme Court. It's just a ripoff of our system. But is it like the UN? Is it like NATO? No, it's Within like the reality, American government. And each planet essentially functions as a state? Yeah, exactly. You nailed it. How meaningless do you feel if you're an entire I know. planet, an entire Ima- world? Imagine if there were 50 million states. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and each state was that large and had the, like think of, okay so the one planet of Naboo which functions as a state little planet right we see how different the fucking Gungans live from how the humans live true not to mention all the wacky spooky sea creatures and you're telling me one person gets a vote to represent all of them when the Gungans don't even seem to fucking respect it's only at the end of Phantom Mass that they're like okay Padman we can work together that is this is all very fair it's all very true. Uh, so the Galactic Senate has 2,000 Congress people, a.k.a. Senators, uh, representing sectors, systems, individual planets, corporations, and guilds. Imagine being someone who's uh, assigned to speak for an entire system of planets. Some are di- elected directly. Some are appointed by a planet's ruler. Some are a planet's ruler. And they are the only ones with voting power. How does a- I don't know. You could join or be a signatory to someone who had joined. But is it like the UN? Is it like NATO? I mean, it's you like... You asked that already. You asked that five seconds I, ago. Because I, I don't understand know. this. I, I think don't... it's like our c- government. But here's the thing. So you're telling me whoever the chancellor is is allowed to tell every single fucking planet what to do? No, because the chancellor's like the president, right? All right, well, all right. <laughs> right, the president of of the galaxy? Yeah. Of the universe? Yeah. Maybe. Well, of the Republic, of the organization that is helping to... Yeah. The Senate is led by a Supreme Chancellor. So it's kind of like a speaker, you know? You right. Know? Like that's... So maybe he's almost more kind of like more of a prime minister than a president. Uh, Kind of. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, okay, but... He's elected by the representatives of the Senate. He could serve two four-year terms before having to retire. But they, their main function is just to figure out fucking trade routes. Here's an interesting thing. Yeah. All of the chancellors elected between 1,400 BBY and 1,000 BBY. Again, Attack of the Clones takes place in around like 30 BBY. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. All the chancellors elected in that period, in this 400-year period, were Jedi. Oh, shit. But then that was broken by some other guy. They were, this is all 1,000 years were, before the movie. doesn't matter. They were Jedi. Yeah, so well, they used to be seems- Jedi. Right. They train Jedis to be keepers of the peace. Yeah. They would be good at that. Anyway, apparently the Supreme Chancellor is not an important position until Palpatine takes it over. Before then, it is kind of like a functionary trying to corral all these people. Palpatine's the one who kind of turns it into a dictatorship. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like I fucking give up. I don't... So, all they're really dealing with... It seems in the first movie is where you're allowed to trade, what routes you're allowed to use. Yeah, it's how all it's over taxation or trade routes. Right, and the threat is we we can't get these guys to listen to us. But why should they? The what? threat is yeah, and there's no movement. Right, it's like oh well, they're doing a blockade. The Senate can deal with it, but they got to vote. That takes forever. They need a committee hearing. The Trade Federation is in there slowing Capitol things Hill, down. Garfield exactly. eating lasagna. It's it's a you know. George Lucas is so mad about Garfield eating all that lasagna. Yeah. And he goes and writes two movies about it. Yeah. But then he also includes, like, space battles. I know we're beating a dead horse here, but George Lucas has so much money and he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Why does he care? Why is why is this stuff irking him so much? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, let's remember the era. 
that this movie is coming out in 2002. Yes. yes. This movie's coming out after 9 11, before time. the war in Iraq. Different time. And it's coming about at a time when the presidency in America is becoming a little imperial. Mm hmm. Now, I don't know when George Lucas wrote these movies. Apparently, he'd been working on them since the 70s. Yeah. Really? So, yeah. Ooh. I know. It's crazy, right? Ooh. Crazy, right? Yeah. He had these ideas like early 70s. And, you know, over. George Lucas yeah. is a politically involved man. And he want, yep. he was originally going to make Apocalypse Now in the 70s mm -hmm. as this documentary style. Vietnam movie where he was going to try to incorporate real footage of the war which uh -huh. he was very against you know and and the horrors of it and then it got handed off to Francis Ford Coppola who was like you know what heart of darkness <laughs> let's 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 abandon all this documentary yeah. shit and do like the most blown out cinematic thing ever well and American graffiti is very a very anti-war yes it's very much about that generation that it, lost it's about generation the sadness of these men shipping who go to Vietnam fight, yeah, in yeah, the 60s. pointless battle um so I think maybe George Lucas is grinding the axe again because what is – Attack of the Clones is about militarism. Yeah. It's about like the the sort of uh, – the rise of militarism. OK. But this is my question, David. What's your question? Are they the UN? Are they NATO? No. My real question is <laughs> – I was briefly afraid that was actually your question. Yeah. My real question is in this film, the whole thing – Fucking Palpatine's entire bag. I'm scratching myself. I'm fucking Furiously. covered in lesions from sleeping on a floor. Um, all he wants to do is militarize the Galactic Republic. He wants the Galactic Republic to have an army. But it doesn't right. sound like the Galactic Republic up until this point has really dealt with wars. Fair it sounds enough. like they're fucking dealing with just like the logistics of like how we all communicate with each other, send shit to each other. It's like they're just like a central hub for like. So make sure we're all on the same fucking page. Yeah, trade routes. So what army do they want to fight against anyone who's not in the Galactic Republic? Yeah, the Separatists. Ben it, has a question. Yeah. Well, but then also weren't the Sith? Wasn't that a thing that happened previously? That's, a that, war it's true. between so the Jedi? Long ago. Thousands of years yeah. ago, the Sith were up to no good. That's right. in here. So there must have been war at some That's point. That's true. Yeah, they didn't have an army at that point, but now that there are only literally two Sith left in the entire galaxy... <laughs> Now they're getting it together? They need an army. Uh, there was an in incident called the Old Sith Wars. The old? L loading, loading. 4,000 BBY in the post after the post-Mandaron period. This has all been written down on the internet. It's crazy. Someone spent it's so literally much time on insane. This. It's like fan edited. Like, even if we drop the veil and acknowledge that there's more Star Wars shit in the world, it's still insane that this exists. Well, like the trading card app. Exactly. The That's toys, the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Universe. But it's still yeah. insane. Yeah, yes. Because this shit is insane. It's, it's crazy. It's insane. I don't. That? Anyway, it's a series of conflicts about some fallen Jedi. I don't know. This doesn't but seem very important. it feels to me like what if like PayPal There's had an like army? There's like eight PayPal wars. was like our job is to make sure money's transferred from people to people. What if we have an army so we can fight other people? It's like what what other <laughs> Okay, so it used to be You might be that might be the future. There might be like an P Uber PayPal army and a PayPal Uber army. army. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It used to be that if you were a planet, you immediately gained entry into the Galactic Republic. Mhm. Mm now it's it's no longer the case. You got to fucking you know yeah, it, I get think a guarantor. You have to write an application <laughs> essay. Yeah, you need to submit two years of tax returns. Right, whatever it is, which means that some people are not part of the Galactic Republic, not because they left it, as described in the opening crawl of Attack of the Clones, True. but because they never got in. True. And so the Galactic Republic wants an army to fight the people who aren't part of the Republic that they have stopped from being part of the Republic. Griffin, you're again. You're digging into something where I feel like you've already hit bottom. Like we don't know. There has to be some fucking no, answer. This is one reason these movies are so annoying. They give you like a surface explanation just to justify the plot, and then that's it. Well, but think about it this way: if we're going to compare it to our actual history, yes, sure. Um, and we we mentioned Hitler. Yeah. Uh, so there was a point where Hitler started reaching out to countries like Cuba, uh -huh. um, and basically was trying to expand his empire to take over the world. He um, want to take over the world. It is crazy. And so Cuba was a country that we didn't get along with uh -huh. for a uh, very long time. Very long time. Yeah. And I feel like maybe these other planets and systems that weren't involved, it was like kind of, again, it's a it's politics about leverage. It's about having more people. So the separatist movement right. was basically grabbing the free yeah. agents to yeah. try sure, and bring them sure. in. Yeah. You, can't, you can't have people leaving or challenging you. It's totally true. You know? Senate's got to be one big thing, right? 
That's yeah. the idea. But it's then, the same thing as the Civil War. Then hey, you can't it's go. It's like the Civil War. We're a country. Yeah. yeah. You're not allowed to leave. Technically, right. everyone's part of the same thing, but they're like having internal You battles. can do your own stuff, but you're in this country, not that country. And we make some of the rules. And that's democracy. That's democracy, and baby. That's, that's my two cents. Democracy. But some senators. That's my two cents. I'm handing Griffin an empty bottle. snapple. That's, I probably get what two cents from recycling. What's the what's the rate? I think it's five. Think it's five. Hey, that's up. not bad. Let's say ten in Michigan, baby. Really? Yup. That's get, a good fucking you, state, you, bro. You get five cents, but uh, in California, I think you get more. In Michigan, like you say. I will say I was in California last week and I saw uh, even I more. Was in California. I was in California. I'm so Hollywood. Uh, I was in California not getting a job, but uh, just uh, conclusively not being hired for uh, a thing I wanted. But um, I uh, uh, saw, saw uh, so many people pushing uh, shopping carts of bottles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think no, it really you do is see a cottage industry there. there. There was yeah. more of it out there. Uh, I went to a Dollar Tree. And I couldn't pull out a fucking shopping cart because some other jamoke had put his shopping cart, his fucking from home shopping cart, filled with his fucking cans and bottles and would had blocked the shopping cart way. That's terrible. Yeah. I don't really care. You were there for VidCon, right? Yeah, I was there for VidCon. Weird. Yeah. And then I stayed long. Hey, hey, so uh, new Gunray? He's kind of like... The Koch brothers. Yeah. Think about yep. it, man. Industrialists. Yep. They have the money and the Throwing power. Throwing his money around. Manipulating yep. the government and yep. with your money so that it benefits you and your company and your, you know, self. Making money for money's sake. TC14 is a protocol droid. I know we're talking about Attack the Clones. we got to get back to this for a second. Do you think she knows she's working for the bad guys? No. Like, <sighs> She's so sweet. She's so polite. No, I don't think she does. She's such a sexy fucking little Megs. But, like, C-3PO seems to have a personality, and TC-14 seems to be about all business. Mm -hmm. Do you think she's just programmed Her programming to be, like, may be limited. Yes, it may be, yeah. It may, she may not be able to think about the wider world. Because I want to believe she's pure of heart. I mean, she might be programmed to be pure of heart. That's fine. Yeah. As long as she's not, like, look, whoever pays me. No, because... There's no way, right? I don't think robots care about money. No. Do they? No, they're bought for money. They don't make money. Yeah, the robot stuff is all very weird. Because C-3PO seems to hate everything that someone asked him to do. Although he was programmed by a little boy who doesn't fucking know robotics. Well, that might be... Uh, he does know robotics because he did build a robot. But he yeah. definitely is a stubborn little boy. Yeah. Well, he's more of a stubborn little man. Uh, now. When okay. he's a little boy, he's like, Sure, I'll be, you know, Quag Master Qui-Gon, I'll get in your spaceship. And then when he's growing up, he's like, eh, I want to get in a fucking spaceship. I don't know. He's so sexy. I don't know what you want to... I want to have a girlfriend. Uh, anyway, the politics world. of this movie are s is stupid. Okay, let's keep <laughs> digging because there has. There's no digging. Okay, I'll throw out another. So, what about uh, the Jedi's involvement? That's the thing. Yep. Right? because they have. They're this like. I know. We tried to talk about them. Organization. Well, we said the Jedi's are kind of like Vatican they're City. They're so weird, or they're kind of like the UN. I mean, they're they you know like the UN peacekeeping force. It's like they're kind of without a country, but they don't have to like. Uh, they don't answer to anybody. Yeah, that's the thing. If the no. UN is representatives for each country, and yes, like the Jedi come from anybody. different planets, but they don't represent that planet. They represent yeah, the, the Jedi. Jedi. But they also I think just it's like represent the Vatican like, City. I think it's like the Pope and his fucking cronies, those fat cats up in Vatican City. Yeah, I mean, you know, think about uh, Catholics and their you know oh, history do. with with little kids. Uh huh. You know, similar to stealing up these little Jedi babies. Ben, what a fucking point. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys are just making waves over here. Yeah, it's I want I want to rip this open. I want to be the fucking Alex Gibney of the fucking Galactic Should Republic. Should I see his uh, Apple movie? I don't know. I mean, it's like fucking that guy makes like seven movies he a year. He makes a lot of movies. He's got like a team. Did I just see something Alex by him? Alex Gibney's like a name for a collective. <laughs> it's like a it's a protocol droid. Yeah. Uh what 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 movie did I see just be? Going clear. And he did the right. Sinatra documentary, too. Yeah. Which was like a two-parter. Can I thing. say something? You can say anything. This Going is a free clear. Space. I don't know. You know what's much better? What's much better? The book. Yeah, well, that I believe. book is fucking What, rad. Dianetics is great. <laughs> Dianetics is a great book. <laughs> by the way, this podcast is officially sponsored by Scientology. Our friend Morgan Evans <laughs> turned us on to them. Have you ever seen Battlefield Earth? No. You've never seen it? No. It's really weird. I am obsessed with Dianetics in a very different way than Morgan is. 
and that I don't let myself get close to <laughs> Both them. of you should not be doing any business with those people. We're both highly insecure people who exactly. are career-driven. They are, they're, and they and like are looking for validation yes. from the outside And you world. work in the film industry. Yeah. Griffin, could you tell me a little bit, or just tell our listeners a little bit more about your relationship with your father? Yeah, sure. Can so uh, my father is L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> He's they the, make you sign a contract yeah. declaring him your father. Yeah, I consider him the holy father. <laughs> uh, no, we want to we want to get more listeners. Let me talk about my dad a little more. Uh, what's what's an interesting thing to say? Um, he worked in the biz, right? Didn't he work in the, the yeah, biz? Yeah, he teaches now. He uh, works at a, yeah. he, he works at NYU. He teaches film classes. He like he like fell into it by accident and then hated it for a long time. The biz or NYU? The biz. Yeah. My dad wanted to be a sports broadcaster. Sure. I'm sort of living his dream right yeah, now. Yeah, he says that to you all the time, right? Yeah. He says, Griffin, you're sort of living my dream. Right now. Yeah. Uh, he wanted to be a sports broadcaster, and he did, there was this thing called Sports Phone, which is like prior to the internet. Was it, it like Movie Phone? Uh, very different. <laughs> <laughs> was very, it like the New York different. Mets, three. Yeah. The Toronto Blue oh, no, Jays, no, 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 one. No, it was like, what, what <laughs> happened was, the scores? <laughs> if you didn't want to wait the next morning, yeah, that's what it was. If you want, if you didn't want to wait till the paper came out the next morning. Sure. And there wasn't internet to look up. You would need to know the scores yeah. of the game tonight, especially for uh, gamblers, mm. of which my father was one and of the still most is. degenerate. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, he was like, my yeah, dad he, was right. really into betting on sports. Right. But sports phone was like low level aspiring uh, sports commentators, anchors. Mm. And you'd like call in and there'd be a pre recorded message. They'd update it like every hour with the new scores. And so they'd like cycle out the guys and it would be like, Hi, I'm Pistol Pete Newman. That's what he was. He was Pistol Pete Newman. You're kidding. That's He's crazy. Like, Hi, I'm Pistol Pete Newman, and here are the scores for April 17th, 1981. Uh-huh. And then he would, like, read you the scores. That's and weird. Uh, then he was, like, building up to trying to be, like, a TV sports anchor, and he got a shot and had, like, his, like, Albert Brooks in Broadcast News moment where he was like, oh, I'm terrified of being on camera. Yeah, as I would be. Uh, I can do radio. Hey, boy, can you do radio. Thank you. Yeah. I was waiting for you to say something. Yeah. Um, I've been waiting 18 weeks for you to say something. David, you can do radio. <laughs> you can do, I can do radio, but yeah, TV, the camera freaks me out. Of uh, course, you, you love the camera and the camera loves I you. I don't. It freaks me out. No, no. The camera loves you. I like, I like having been on camera. I feel very uncomfortable in front of cameras. Is it on street? Do you know for like, uh, like uh, maybe like 15 years of my life, I wouldn't let anyone take a picture of me? That's weird. Cameras made me like aggressively uncomfortable. And then I became an actor. <laughs> Very strange. You're a strange. You're a bundle of I like I like doing like uh, like acting like school plays and stuff. But when when I was being filmed, I got really uncomfortable. Um, yeah, for like 15 years, if someone took out a camera, I would duck or like cover my face. Yeah, it sounds so annoying. It was really annoying. I would be so mad. Everyone at thought you it was like an affectation kid. because right. I couldn't yeah. explain it, and I was like, I don't. I just don't. I just yeah. I would be so mad at you. I hate kids who do that. I was such a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, I have a surprise. We're gonna get back to talking about politics in 45 minutes. But I have a I have a surprise. You have a surprise? Yeah. What? Wait, I actually am unprepared for whatever. Yeah, he's I do. was debating whether or not to do this, but I think we've hit a point. We got to do it. Or what? Talk about what a difficult kid I was. Oh wait, do you have like a picture? No, I, I you know, I've been packing, oh. going through my. Oh parents right, shit. this is. I forgot. That's a treasure trove. Yeah, and I found something. <gasps> Back in blackface, or no. can you minstrel show me? No. I don't think you said that before. I forgot that. Part. Can you minstrel show me how to get to Racism Street by Griffin Newman? This is the essay. I mean, for people who might not know, this is the essay you wrote. Well, what year? Do you know what year? This probably would have been two thousand and four. Okay, so and it's about uh, Hollywood's history of minstrelry. Minstrelry. Uh, yes, uh, it was me trying to solve the racial ills of. You the were world. trying to solve it. Well, what, what class did you write this for? History, American history? history. I think it was American history. And like, what was the assignment? Write about something. <laughs> <laughs> write about something. Griffin went to like a hippie school. Yeah, I just know. I just remember that the fact that I chose this topic was like very odd and surprising and off base. It was. They did not expect you to do that. No, because I don't think. I mean, you got a good. Yeah, Griffin. I very much enjoyed reading this paper. Hey now, you made a fine, impassioned. Whoa, struggling here. Sorry. Uh, case against the strife of some. Black entertainment. He writes black entertainment in quotes. In quotes. As if it's a myth. And your use of Amos and Andy is very effective. I did a lot of research. <laughs> you do a good job of describing yeah. the origins of minstrel shows and what they represented. What you needed to develop more was the time between minstrelry and the time of Amos and Andy. Uninteresting to me. Uh, what did the... 
What did the four <laughs> white men do? I don't know what that means. I think they were a group. What sort of shows became popular? How did minstrel shows become so acceptable that between that you could end up with Amos and Andy? And you pass over the jazz singer and birth of a nation too quickly, Griffin. Those are seminal moments in film, both for how they looked, messages they portrayed, and how obviously they sounded. Eh? And obviously how they sounded. That's what you're saying. Obviously how they sounded. Right. You can establish a timeline rope. Uh, but he did enjoy the views. You don't get a grade. This is Saint Anne's. They don't give you grades. Don't give you grades. Oh my god! Well, a, fuck. He went to the. I went to the. He went to the same school my girlfriend went to. They did, they write like an essay. Let me see if I can find the section on Beauty Shop. So like when Beauty Shop's a crazy great movie. I hate it. I, I totally know it's so is. good. Uh, this is the kind of school though where they like hug you. It's like, a it's a to it's get a grade. Lena or Dunham or, went there. It's like yeah. a hippie Brooklyn rich kid. You like, write like essays instead. It's that's. It was like Jesus Christ. It was founded with the purpose of like being a nice alternative school for like you know kids who maybe think differently or whatever. And, but then like it's a private school in Brooklyn. I think just a lot of rich people sent their kids there. Uh, you, okay, so you want to hear some Artie. some really misguided, Artie. disgusting things I said? I just want to read some excerpts. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Everyone's gonna stop listening to this show. Everyone's already stopped. For how many sh- years? How many minutes have we been recording? How many years? Forty. Okay. For a show that's not allowed to be replayed on television, the quote-unquote racist characters of Amos and Andy. Mm. So I'm calling mm. it to question whether or not they're racist, which is not my place to do. True. Use better grammar that the characters in films like Soul Plane are Griffin, smarter. this is terrible this territory is that you're in. You should territory. really be clear about this. Yeah. I, Griffin of You today, are telling people how to talk, essentially. Yep. Yeah. Smarter... And characters in films like Guess Who. So you just want to be, like, contrarian about, like, hey, man, Amos and Andy, that was well-written entertainment compared to this nonsense. Yeah, I think that was my big point, was I thought, like, as a comedy writer, Amos and Andy had good jokes. <laughs> I'm taking this away from no, you. No, because I, I got to read this one other All sentence. Right, I know I'm digging myself sentence. into a pit. You are. Smarter than characters in films like Guess Who and will accomplish more than characters in films like My Baby's Daddy. So I was, like, looking at... A film like My Baby's Dad, which if you don't remember, was I like the urban remake of Three Men and a Baby. Yeah. Or it wasn't. It was three men who have I'm look it up. children out of wedlock and then have to deal with being single fathers. It was Anthony Anderson, Eddie Griffin, and Michael Imperioli were the three men. <laughs> and I was passing judgment on what those characters would go on to accomplish in their lives after the film. Right. Above all, though, Amos and Andy was a well-written humorous show. What the fuck are you talking about? I have no idea. Right. I don't understand. How did I get a no. good? I'm this is the most offensive thing well, this ever. Is the whole, this is the horrible privilege that you are invested with. <laughs> you could write this nonsense and no one would slap you down. We can ask how we live in a society where children are getting abortions at age 13 and then nominated these songs for Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards, a show whose winners are chosen by the hey. children of the world, but the nominees are selected by committees. Of adult. The children of the world? What am David, I saying? by the way, you went to school in England, right? I went to school in England. Yeah, I went to school in North Jersey. Like, Crazy. You no, know, it was like, my my grade was basically just, they would just stamp like, you're not going to go anywhere in life. That was like the grade <laughs> and the grade notes just, I got. It was just a grade, it was a letter grade or a grade out of 10. It was pretty simple. You know? They gave me a grade. I graded my work. Like, if you did okay, you wouldn't get punched in the arm. No. You know, just be like, good job. Eight out of ten. That sounds nice. Whatever. Normal. Right. Here's, here's the Griffin, exact sentence I was Griffin. looking for, and I'm going right. to throw this away because okay, I can't please. fucking- I need to look at it, but you are not allowed I, to I'm going to be anymore. murdered the second after I read this you sentence out loud. Pimp and Ho on page six. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I also write unintelligent, overly sassy, sluttish women on page four. Um, uh, Got them. I, here's here's the sentence. Ready? Ready for me to be murdered? Please just... Guys, just watch the door because someone's going to walk in and stab me. Go ahead. Fucking Joe this Biden is This is our fan fiction episode me. where I'm actually just like, oh my God. Yeah. This is the sentence. This is the sentence. What is I it? Say it. the sentence. It's so clean. The spin-off beauty shop, however, is far more racist than Amos and Andy ever was. <laughs> now, let's talk about beauty shop for a second, which yeah. I think is a tremendous movie. I haven't seen it since then, but clearly it made me very angry at the time. Um, beauty shop is... Once sp- again, not my place to fucking... No. No, you don't know what you're talking Decree- about. No, no, I had no idea what I was talking about. I thought I was going to fucking solve it. I think it. You're, you're kind of like a Richard Cohen in the Washington Post, just to, to bring it to mention, like an old white op-ed writer who's sort of like uh-huh. doesn't understand what he's seeing in culture these days and is like, 
these movies seem to denigrate people. They seem to women seem to not have it. And like, I don't understand. This is terrible. Like not understanding like culture reflects all kinds of things that are going on in society yes. rather than lecturing or, you know, uh, whatever. You know, like you're, there's and a also, and, and also you're not allowed to tell people how to talk. Agreed. A hundred percent. Agreed. If I've learned anything in the last uh, 12 years of my life, it's like, what should you be talking about? Fucking attack the clones. <laughs> yeah, that That's a thing true. you can be an authority on. Uh, anyway, I love Beauty Shop. Uh, I saw it in theaters. Me I too. reviewed it for my college newspaper. And I said, it, I think I said it was fine. I don't, I don't know if I gave it a rave. But I you didn't write it. an eight page paper about how it was I, worse I, than it was. I think I gave it like three out of five and said, like, it's a good time. It's a little silly. I regret uh, literally just, everything right now. I regret. <laughs> Writing this paper. You regret your father's sperm entering your mother's yeah. uh, ova. I, I regret and forming a zygote. Yeah. 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 Every yeah. Ben's look giving me a weird look. I regret everything. I didn't from... have sex education at my school. So <laughs> what, what was your school? Did you just yeah, go to school in like some alley school. where they like threw bricks at you? So it was uh There were lessons <laughs> written on the bricks. It was like kinda <laughs> like, you know, there was like a highway and then you'd go down the embankment. Yeah. And it was like kind of a ditch. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> uh, anyway, Beauty Shop, spin off of Barbershop 2. Which I love the two barbershop movies. Which had it had kind of Barbershop Two had this sort of backdoor appearance by Queen Latifah with yes. the idea that she would go make her own movie, right? Mm-hmm. She's not really a big part no, of it. No, they establish she's just, an ex of Ice Cube's character. Yeah, and she's she you know she does hair yeah. like, and then in Beauty Shop she has moved to I believe it's Atlanta, uh-huh. and she talks about like oh I'll miss Chicago, but you know great to be here in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and it's mostly about like she gets this old busted beauty shop and fixes it up with the help of Alfred Woodard, Academy another, Award nominee. As, yeah, and as another uh, beauty shop employee and some other stylists. Uh, she's got a daughter. I think she has like a kid. I think it's a daughter. Yeah. A cute kid. So. Uh, she used to work for an Austrian mean hairdresser man played by Kevin Bacon, who she has abandoned, mm-hmm. called like George or something. I forget what his name Like Jorge. I, I don't yeah. know. What it, it's, yeah. it's very yeah. weird. It's like he's just like an evil white European. Mm-hmm. Like he has this sort of amorphous accent. Yep. And Jaimon Honsu plays. A Academy Award v- nominee. Two time plays a very handsome mm. uh, African. I think he's Nigerian immigrant who's an electrician and like fixes up the place with her, and then they fall in love. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's great. Everyone was freaking out about Andy McDowell in Magic Mike XXL. Yeah, her little appearance playing this kind of like older Southern lady who sort she of does the same thing. In, she does uh, the exact yeah. same thing in Beauty Shop, which was nine years previous. Uh, Alicia Silverstone is also in it as like a sort of a dumb white lady who says things like for your FYI. Yeah, that's probably what I was offended by as a dumb white lady myself. (laughs) Um, Ben, you... I think it's a fun movie. It's very formless, which I kind of like. It's really just about someone starting a business and then like she successfully starts the business. Uh, Ben, you smoke. Uh, Do you have a lighter on your person? Yeah. When we're done with this episode, I'd like to go outside and burn this paper. No, it's great. You can't burn it. I, I'm, oh God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Look, it's part of your history. Yeah. As shameful as it is. This was like my minstrel show. All right. Just that was talking. like the dark part of my history, the worst level of race relations where I felt like I had the authority to write a paper on minstrel shows. Um, it's crazy that you wrote the, how old were you? 15. Yeah. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. Is nuts. Anyway, but Star Wars Zach McClellan says very confusing politics. Are they the UN? Are they NATO? What are they? I don't know. It <laughs> doesn't matter. It's okay. very vague. They're the government. So some people are elected senators. I think everyone's elected. Oh, no, no. Some are elected. Yep. Some are appointed by the planet's ruler. Okay. And some are the planet's ruler. Okay. So let's talk about this. You know, so like you've got, you've got Palpatine from Naboo. I think he's elected. Queen Amidala, we know, is elected. She's also elected. The people But she does Naboo. not serve in the Senate. Right. Palpatine serves. Boss Nass lives on Naboo, but he seems to be the ruler of underwater Naboo. He is, but he seems to have no representative in the Senate until Jar Jar Binks. Right. So does that count as two different? They seem, they, I think they hang out on the same platform. <sighs> they all hang out on these little platforms. Yeah. And they can kind of drive them. They're floating and they can drive them into like the empty space uh-huh. and kind of yell. Like we see that happening. Yeah. Where like, Padme will drive out and be like, you know, the Trade Federation is attacking our planet. And then the Trade Federation comes out like, this is outrageous. And uh, I do say this is outrageous. Yes. 
We see ETs too. We see, we a bunch see of ETs, ETs, and we see these little sort of these camera droids sort of floating around them. Like, so it's obviously being filmed for someone. Are they sentient? Do they have their own representatives? The, the camera droids? Yes. Yeah, do droids have representatives? I don't know. Is Wat Tambor a representative? The guy who's I don't friend? know. <laughs> What's important is the movie doesn't really want you to care. It's a very thin satire. <sighs> On political process, is Wat Tambor a robot? I always thought he was like a cyborg because yeah, the top no, of his he head is. looks fleshy. I don't know. So does that mean who is he serving a two masters? Is he more man than he's not man? He's a fucking lizard head. I'm just reading your paper. It's so bad. Give me some props for the title. The title at least is good. I was really good at making jokes. And oh, I liked Amos and Andy because it had good joke writing. I'm going to edit the shit out of this episode. Oh, yeah. No, this episode won't be released. Make it two minutes long. Probably will. Back in my face, can you minstrel show me how to get to racism? I mean, that's good wordplay. Can you minstrel show me is maybe an overreach. I, think, I don't think so. I okay. think I pulled it off. I think I stuck the landing. <laughs> you did not. The title page, I think I stuck the landing. And then you open it up and I'm immediately burning alive. <laughs> I'm running around in flames. It's just you, you, the thing is like, you kind of start out with this basic history of minstrelry, which is fine. Like you've done some research and I there's nothing research, wrong yeah. with that. And then you start yelling about how like rap music is offensive and so, and yeah. it's like, where did this come from? Sounds like a grandpa. Yeah. Oh my oh, God. Oh man. You are really alienating yourself yeah. on this podcast. Uh huh. <laughs> this was years ago. That does sound like the, yeah, the first half is like a well-written oral history, not oral history, but well-written history of. The traditions and the second half just becomes like Donald Trump Jr. Like it's just like little like spouting off the mouth. So did you like Magic Mike XXL? I did. I like the first one more. That's crazy. Yeah. You like the first one more. Because I do feel like with Magic Mike XXL, there was this brief hysteria. Not hysteria, that's the yeah. wrong word. Just super hype. Uh -huh. Everyone was going crazy about it. Yeah. And then it didn't And make it's that such an interesting an movie. Yeah. And then it kind of fizzled. Yeah. It didn't make a lot of money. It made fine money. But the first movie was like a genuine phenomenon. Yes. And this one wasn't. Yeah. And it was interesting that 94% of the audience was apparently female mm -hmm. in Hollywood, which is the in the in the movie theaters, which yep. is crazy. Yeah. But uh, I feel like no one's talking about it. It was a really interesting movie that I really liked. I, I do think that's a fascinating movie. Can we talk about Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of If you want. I don't know. What's there to say about that one? I haven't heard oh, of that one. I don't know. It's so it's such a fucking <laughs> brain fuck of a movie. It's Look, the movie's mostly about a romance. That's the that's the problem. Yeah, but Anakin keeps on talking about how he wants a dictatorship. He does. Right. He thinks one person should just lead everything. In the same way stars in the vein, oh, I think no. you mean... It's riddled know. with fucking... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wrote, you wrote vein like weather vein, but I think you mean like... You I, know, I also... Arm I vein. <laughs> guarantee you I wrote this thing in four hours between 2 a.m. and 6 sure, a.m. Yeah, yeah. the morning before I had to hand it in. I guarantee in you. In the same way stars in the vein of Elvis and James Dean. Like, I would say some very... I, some people I know who listen to this podcast, we got like Lux from... Lux out, you know, she, yeah. she and or Avery Edison. Like people who I think are very like smart... Mm -hmm. Like sort of progressive minded people who yeah. can write really well and think really well on these kinds Just of topics. Just saying I'm the anti version. They'll never want to speak to you They'll again. They'll never speak Especially after I read this, this aloud. Is... In the same way stars in the vein of Elvis and James Dean made kids want to wear leather jackets in the 50s, the children of this generation grow up eagerly awaiting the day they acquire a Glock. Now, gee, with a Glock? What am I? Who the fuck? <laughs> That's like an Andy Rooney Which is like monologue. a cop gun as well. By, yeah, it's what ridiculous. What the fuck am I talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I don't, I don't even know. I'm such an angry kid. Um, I, I don't know. I think, uh, like, I had a very, uh... But what are you angry about? I, that's the question. I was question. angry about I think, myself. I, I hated myself. I think that's the question America's always asking of these yeah. people who yeah. have guns and do terrible things and these yeah. people who are on the internet, like, bleeding about, like, white, you know, racism against white people or misogyny against men or what, I don't know, like, these people who are very, like, what are you so mad about? What's happening to you? You know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes maybe some terrible things are happening. I have no idea. Like, you know. To me, no. But it's it, no, you're fine. I'm fine. I just have the hormones and whatever. I was sad. I don't know. You're a grown man. I don't know if you can blame hormones. No, at the time, I'm saying. Oh, yeah. At the, the time, time of this. For sure. Yeah. I mean, this, this is the thing I've always talked about. Uh, like, like uh, everything... Uh, that uh okay all right no, no that's enough listen, that's enough i that's i'm enough. put i'm we gotta I stop i don't know what i'll i'm 
That's not all right. So listen, this was a life ago. This, this was a life ago. I, I don't stand by. I don't. No, I know. All right. So listen, I, I'm going to pose this question okay. to you, gentlemen. Donald Trump is leading. Yeah. In the Republican Party as a candidate. What True. if we leak this essay and say that he wrote it? <laughs> we could maybe do that. Yeah. This essay might be too well written for Donald Trump. It probably is. He. Yeah. Anyway, go on. But the co- the question I'll pose to you is. Uh, Donald Trump, I mean, the the idea that he could be president, mm-hmm. like that he would even be considered a legitimate candidate, sure. blows my fucking mind. It's yeah. crazy. But to bring it to the movie, you have that uh, dual character of Palpatine. Yep. And also. Darth Sidious. I think that Trump maybe is a dark figure. Yeah. That may be potentially under the wig, and when he pulls his face skin off, he's what? he's a reptilian. He's part oh of the boy. reptilian elite. He, he likes he's into the reptilian thing. Yeah, that's what I think is going like on. Like fucking Sam Wessel. Oh, that's true. She is a changeling. Maybe he doesn't have to rip it off. Maybe his face just changes. He's a shapeshifter. He's more dangerous than we ever thought. <sighs> I'm not sure what's going on. This is the know. best I could. Oh, I don't know. I was just trying to throw something. No, no, out that's there. quite all right. I love black people. I just, I gotta, I gotta. <laughs> no, say Griffin. That. No, God I gotta damn say it. that. You can't I gotta go say that. that. I like them more than white people. I think oh, white people. Su- if I wrote this paper today, it'd be about how white people need to fucking shape up and ship out. That's what I'd be saying. I don't know. No, nothing in humanity makes sense anymore. Oh boy, Griffin. I don't know. I don't know what to tell. All right. You. Well, you know what? Let's wrap this up. No. Wait. What are we at? We're, I don't know, I'm going to be Dave editing this. Dave's checking his phone. So. I'm just, no, I'm trying to Everything find something specific. terrible. Everything's the worst. Oh my God. She, Taylor Swift posted an Instagram and it got one million likes. What was it? I don't know. It's a picture of her in a fucking thingy. I don't did, know. Did, can, did you post an Instagram of the title page? I'm going that? to. Yeah. Do you want me to? Yeah, I just don't want people to read the inside. They have to listen to the podcast to hear us read it. Yeah, actually, I might, t- I might tweet it. It's less of an Instagram, more of a tweet. Are we going insane, David? <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I actually, I consider this therapy. Yeah. This, this episode, I really yeah. enjoy this. Yeah. Like, every week, uh, we usually chat for a while before we even start recording, and it's a very nice... I gotta say, too, the cornerstone of Scientology is that you sit in a room and you audit all your past guilt and your, your experiences of shame... And so you relieve them from your body so it's no longer weighing you down. I don't want to talk about Scientology. Well, I'm saying maybe this episode was my auditing. I had to read this paper on air. It's very embarrassing. Because I've been living with this shame People, that I wrote Griffin's this. a better person than that paper makes him sound like. It's That's, very important to state that. And he is aware that that paper is an example of the most worst, most horrible kind of yep. like entitlement. Yep. Yeah. And I don't tell anyone how to behave these days. Good. But uh, I was an angry kid. I was 15 years old. Uh, I probably just saw Beauty Shop the day before and yep. was angry about it for some reason. Yeah. And uh, also, want to restate, probably wrote the whole thing in four hours. Yeah. On, like, no sleep. Um, um, I want to end this. Yeah, we got it. And by this, I mean my life. I want to just... Now, wait a second. Call it quits. Don't talk like that. Um, uh, no, this was a great productive episode. I audited a lot of my thetans out of my system. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh... Uh, now, thetans are, it's the people in the planes that Xenu blow up, right? They're, they're the creatures. They're like negative emotions. That went into the volcano and became negative emotions that and latch they, onto they latched shame. on us. And yeah. what do they look like? I don't know. I imagine them like blinky, like little Pac Man ghosts. I was going to say, I think they look like space invaders, like the little, beep, 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 the little beep, beep, beep. sprites. And so they're just around us. And the, they go into the our body read. and they like hold it down. Yeah, you have to clear the thetans. You have to release them from your body. And then they you're feed clear, theta on, clear. Like doubt and 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 shame and things like that. Past memories and traumas. See, it's what I don't like about modern religions. I mean, whether Scientology is even a religion, I understand. Is sort uh-huh. of, you know, but yeah. like it's what I don't like is they're too self helpy. It's too self centered. What I like about old religions is it's like, look, you you want to know how to live? Here are the rules. That's it. Yeah. Follow the rules. Yeah. Don't, don't kill people. And you're people. like, but I feel like, d- I showed you the rules. Yeah, these basic rules apply to everybody. That's the rules. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Yeah, don't steal shit. Yeah. <laughs> don't write racist papers. And I'm not saying I'm a religious person, because I'm not. Because no. they're, not, they're not great things. Neither but, of us are. Yeah. Um, in conclusion, is Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones a good sequel to Phantom Menace? No, obviously not. I mean, I don't know. Is it a worse good? movie than say. Phantom Menace? I don't even know. No, is it? Uh, I think it is. 
I don't. I I think it's simultaneously better and worse. Yeah, like I, I don't. I think it's. I think it's simultaneously worse and worse. Okay, uh, Ben. Final thoughts. <laughs> no, you know. Go ahead. Finish your thought. Final thoughts. Yeah. Uh. I'm, yeah, I'm we're still talking shit. about this movie. Yeah. Uh, no. Don't worry. <laughs> we gonna get Connor next week. Maybe I don't know. We I should do DVD know. extras next week. Yeah, maybe it'll be nice yeah. to bring Connor. Yeah, back. I'd like to bring Connor back. Yeah. Uh, but. Griffin, you, don't worry. You're in good hands. I'm gonna cut this episode up to make it sound like you're not a complete monster. No, it's not. It's less about uh, the fact that this is gonna be listened to by people, which at this point, no one's listening this far into the episode, and more just about the fact this is okay. Fucking tie it all back in together. This whole moving thing has just been me having to relive like every element of my entire life. Yeah, you know, it's tough. Like the good and the bad. Good sure. and the bad. And you see a lot of fucking years of confusion. You see like like misplaced emotions. Um, I see a lot of grammatical errors that really, that's honestly the stuff that embarrasses me the most. I mean, like as, as wrong headed and ugly as this paper is, Mm -hmm. it's also just poorly written. I mean, these are poorly structured sentences riddled with typos and, and far too many commas run on sentences. Um, uh, like the sentence I'm speaking right now, um, shiver. What the fuck am I talking about? I don't, I'm done tomorrow. The move is done and I'm putting all the shit in a box. I'm never looking at it ever again. Until like five years from now when I'm probably going to open up the box and cry. I think that's a good plan. Yeah. How's your dad doing, David? Uh, he, he died when I was 20 years old. That sucks. This is not a bad answer. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, you're not you did a bad job answering. Ugh, I blew it. You did. It's just not the answer I want to hear. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a good man? Yeah, absolutely. What was his name? John. You don't know this about me? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we dedicate the episode to him? Of course. I dedicate everything I do to him. Yeah. Every single thing. Uh, Johnny Sims. Well, no one really called him Johnny. He was a John. Oh, I call him John. <laughs> I have a very specific <laughs> relationship Johnny. with ghost dads. Yeah. 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 You have to be colloquial with a ghost no, dad. No, no. And this came up in trivia. He's not actually dead in ghost dad, right? That's the thing. He's actually in a coma. Yeah. Because there was a trivia where we had to identify whether or not the ghost was a ghost. Is, I can't believe it's, it's, we're recording. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And ghost dad was there and we were like, it's ghost dad. He's a ghost. It's in the title. You know, there was Bill Cosby with this little... He's like, you know, tipping his hat or something. And uh, and then we were reminded, yeah, no, he's not dead in the movie. He's just in a coma. The the, the Which makes sense because otherwise Ghost Dad would be a very sad movie. I believe it was a picture round in which the question was dead or not. Right, 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 right. And it turned out that only one of them was actually dead or something. It was a, a ghost or not. Um, it, I, I think it was, I think you're right. I think it was dead or not. It might have been ghost or not. It might have been Ghost or Not, which was the more confusing. That was the because that that round was a disaster. It was for a everyone. disaster, but it was like this whole question. Of like, and they what's were like, ghost, he's not actually like a ghost, position. even Wait. though it's called Ghost Dad, because he's not dead. He's in a coma. Yeah, much like just like Heaven. Yes, which yeah. was the same thing. Yeah, same thing. Okay, with Reese Witherspoon and Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, directed by Mark Waters. It was the movie he made after Mean Girls. Yeah, I believe. Thank you for listening to Attack of the Podcast. I promise next week we're going to actually produce content uh we're no we are we're getting fucking back on the horse let's not make promises we can't i'm keep. promising okay david any any final thoughts mm. I, mean, I was just looking there's a little microphone guard over oh, there i'm losing my mind <laughs> ben goodbye fennel <laughs> the politics of attack of the clones are thinly drawn agreed that is my final thought on this. I can't make sense of any of this. You, to be fair, you did text me. We texted today and we were like, what are we going to do today? And you're like, I don't know, politics. politics. And yeah. I was like, yeah, you know, it was yeah. 20 minutes in that. Yeah, I had another plan tied to a guest. Who then yeah, had we had another plan and it yeah. fell apart. That's true. Yeah. Uh, much like life is what happens when plans fall apart. Right, Ben? Yeah. And as always, fuck 15-year-old girl. <laughs> life is what happens when plans fall apart.